Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and today I have 10 amazing Easter DIYs for you all with a little bit of a coastal vibe. I'm using supplies from the Dollar Tree and I can't wait to show you how I put all of these together. So let's get started. Okay, our first DIY, I'm going to use one of these wood rounds from the Dollar Tree. So easy to DIY and an adorable little bunny window decal that I got at the Dollar Tree as well. So I want to start with the wood round first. I want to do like something a basic with it, um, but I want it to be a blue. So I thought we could, instead of just painting it, kind of make a stain by mixing some Caribbean blue acrylic together with some water and just make a blue tinted stain. That way we can stain the wood. You can still see like that wood grain through it, but I want it to look a little bit coastal, a little bit beachy, but I think this color is really pretty for Easter as well because it is a nice pastel color. So I just stain the whole thing and then I'm just going to wipe off the excess with a paper towel just to kind of dry it off and see how that beautiful wood grain still comes through. I love that for this project. And then check out this adorable window cling bunny from the Dollar Tree. It's got little flowers by its ears. It's so cute. So we're just going to simply Mod Podge that to the front of our Easter sign by putting a thin coat of matte Mod Podge down. Whenever I pick up my Mod Podge at Dollar Tree, I always try to get the matte one because I don't like the sheen. And then just smoothing out our little bunny. I saw this decal and I could not resist. It's so cute. I love bunnies. I think they're adorable. So I love decorating for Easter. So I'm gonna go over the top of the decal with another coat of that Mod Podge to seal this down and make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. I give that a quick dry with my heat gun and then we can further decorate this. I wanted to do something around the edges so it's not quite so plain. And I found these little rub-on decals at the Dollar Tree and they're like all different kinds of like seashells and like sea creatures. And I'm kind of picking out the ones that are like that tealish blue color that's gonna coordinate well with it and just kind of cutting those out. The only challenging part of these is cutting them out without trying to cut any of the other ones. So you can save those. But I kind of wanted to just like frame it out with some sea creatures around the edges just to bring a coastal feel into my DIY. This would be really cute if you um, left it as is, but I did want to add some little coastal touches to mine. So you just peel the back off, stick it down, and rub it. I like to use one of those little Cricut scrapers from the Dollar Tree. Um, and I find that gets it down really well. Sometimes these things go down like amazing. Um, and sometimes you have to put them back down and go after it a couple times. But always kind of check when you're peeling it off to make sure it got, it, it's down. Because if not, you can lay it back down and scrape it some more and get like a better finish. But I'm just going to do like three here on each side. And I think that just provides a nice little subtle detail around the edges of this little sign. And I love these wood rounds from the Dollar Tree. Um, they're in such a nice big size. Um, I actually bought a whole case of them online because I was having trouble finding them at my stores and had it shipped for free to my Dollar Tree. So that's always an option if it's something that you're gonna use a lot of, like a wood rod like this. And we got three scraped on this side. I think they look super cute. Now I want to kind of just distress the whole thing with some ivory acrylic and a chunky brush from a Dollar Tree just to kind of give it that coastal farmhouse vibe. I like to distress when I use window decals because it's gonna kind of take away that perfect look and kind of make it look a little bit more hand painted. So just kind of distressing in one direction 
the following that up with a baby wipe to kind of blend that in and make sure that I don't have it distressed too heavily. You do have to be careful with the baby wipe to make sure that you don't take off your Mod Podge because you want to keep that level of sheen. Now for the hanger, I thought we could just dress it up a little bit. This is the hanger that came with it, but I'm just going to add some Dollar Tree wood beads that I had left over from a wood bead garland. Um, and we're just going to decorate the hanger just to make it a little bit more special. I love to add wood beads. Um, it would also be really cute if you used uh, the Easter one, the Easter wood bead garland. They have like a pastel colored one that would be really cute for this as well. But I'm just going to use the natural color wood beads. And reattach that to our sign. Isn't that bunny just the cutest? I love it. And this is how it turned out. This is how it looks hanging in my home for Easter. Isn't that just the cutest? I love the little subtle coastal details, but it makes it go really nicely with my decor, but it's also very Eastery as well. Okay, our next DIY, I got one of these little tinsel Easter baskets from the Dollar Tree, and we're gonna give it a coastal makeover as well. But first we have to get all this tinsel off. You guys know I love DIYing the tinsel projects from the Dollar Tree because you get this great cage for $1.25 and you can kind of make it into anything. Now this one was a little bit challenging because I wasn't sure how I was going to, um, you know, like replace the tinsel on the eggs, but I'll show you what I ended up doing with this. Um, I'm just a matter of getting it all off there. Sometimes it helps to cut it down the middle um, to get started and then you just kind of have to take it off the little tabs that are around the edges and it's gonna give us this great little Easter basket shape. And a pro tip, um, the little uh, lint rollers from the Dollar Tree work great to clean up the mess from that. Now I'm going to go ahead and just clip the bottom part of it off because it was a little bigger than I needed it to be and I wanted to cover it with seagrass. So I got one of these little spring purses from the Dollar Tree. I think it looks, you know, kind of like a seagrass finish, especially this tan color. And I'm just going to cut the little bag in half. They also have these like in pink and blue. I love this. I think this color looks great for coastal decorating. So I'm just gonna cut the strap off. It's gonna give me a piece that's just the right size. And this is one reason why I shortened the basket is because the fabric was not gonna be long enough to cover the whole thing. Um, but I have done bigger projects by using um, the bigger bags from the Target Dollar Spot. Now for the eggs, I'm just cutting that front section of the plastic off so that I can do my own eggs in there. And I thought the little foam eggs from the Dollar Tree might be perfect for this. But I was afraid you could see the little tabs if I were just to attach it to the frame. So I'm just using some like heavy duty KitchenAid scissors and going around and snipping off the tabs just from the eggs. Just so I'll have a nice flat surface where I can attach those eggs. And I never know what to do with these little foam decorations. Like they have the bunnies and stuff like that. I always have trouble trying to figure out how to DIY them, but this actually tur turned out really well with these. But I only need like a half an egg. So I'm just gonna use a serrated knife and my cutting mat from the Dollar Tree and cut these little guys in half. That way I can just attach it to the front there. I'm just gonna need three of them, three little egg halves and then I can paint them whatever colors I want. And I found that to be a great solution. Now I didn't want to interfere with the basket part so you can see the eggs were just a tiny bit long. So I'm just trimming them down to size so they won't interfere with the basket part. And I'm just gonna go ahead and attach those now by hot gluing those to the little plastic cage and see how they're just the right size to fit on that little Easter basket. You do have to work quickly if you're hot gluing a styrofoam like that though, because it does like to melt, but it does still work. So just gluing all the way around and you can see it was definitely necessary to cut the tabs off because you would definitely be able to see them if I had not. <laughs> Cause they're just the right size. So there's our three little Easter eggs. I thought we could paint them like three little pastel colors um, these are the colors I'm using, celery, terracotta pot, 
and oh, the blue one I think is Lagoon. Um, doesn't matter. Just I wanted like three like spring colors that would go well. And so I'm just going to paint those and it doesn't have to be chalk paint. That's just what I had in those pastel colors. So we're going to do the center one that like, I think it's Lagoon Blue. And this one, like that light green, that celery color, that's a really pretty color. And then the last one, we're going to do that terracotta pot. That is a paint color that I got at Target. I love it. I think it's so pretty. I use that a lot for Valentine's Day. And I wanted to go ahead and get these all painted and everything before I start covering it with my seagrass. That way I won't have to worry about getting paint on my seagrass. Now this is the strap from the bag and we're gonna use that for the strap of the Easter basket just by gluing that around like the outside cage. And it's a little bit flexible so you can pull it around and do the other side as well, just by bending it. And I just trimmed that down to size. Now you can tell that the handle for that is wider than the handle of the purse, so I will have to double that up to cover the entire cage there. So I'm just gonna cut the strap off the other side of the purse. And I love DIYing with these. I always DIY with these purses every year. I always try to buy them at the end of Easter too, so that I kinda have them year round. Cause they really give you that woven seagrass look with very little effort. And we're just going to glue that around. This one was a little bit too sharp of a turn. So I did have to cut it in the middle to get it to bend right to go all the way around. And that looks pretty good. So there's the handle for our little Easter basket. And now I want to use the back of the purse that we cut off before to cover the basket part. Isn't that cute? So I just need to attach it to the cage and I'm just going to put hot glue on all of the um, surfaces that I can working as quickly as I can so that does not dry and then just sitting that on there now be careful because that glue is going to seep through so make sure you don't burn yourself and then I can flip it over I kind of trimmed it down a little bit to be more of the shape of it and I'm going to trim off the bottom as well and kind of pull it around the edges like that to hide any of the little tabs. Now I wanted to decorate it with something on the front of the basket and I got these cute little bunny garland from the Dollar Tree and I really like the blue and white gingham one and so we're just going to pop that off the garland and it's going to be ready to go. A great little decoration for the front of our Easter basket. I'm just going to simply hot glue that on. And this was a really easy Easter DIY, but I think it looks so great hanging in my kitchen. Now this is ribbon I got at the Dollar Tree. It says Happy Easter and it's that beautiful blue color that I love. I'm just going to tie a simple little bow. where you can read like the writing and stuff on the loops and the tails of our little bow and kind of just put it over here on the side. Just as a cute little final touch. And I'm gonna use this as a hanging decor, kind of like it was before, but I think mine looks way more high end. What do you guys think about this little coastal Easter basket DIY? I think it's so cute. I'm just gonna take twine Wrap that around the handle and that's going to be the hanger. I was really pleased with how this one turned out and I'll show you later on in this video how I do a smaller version of this as well. And this is how it looks hanging on the side of my cabinets and my kitchen. So sweet for Easter. Okay, this next DIY I want to use these great eggs from the Dollar Tree and a Easter sign. This is an Easter sign I had left over because I used the cute little bunnies that were on the front to make a garland for my coffee bar. So I just kind of have the rectangular sign left over. It can be anything. I just wanted a rectangle, rectangle sign and something that I can put those great Easter eggs on. Now to cover it, I'm gonna use some of this removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree in the white board. I love using this. I think it looks really coastal. I just peel and stick the wallpaper 
to the back of the sign. The reason I'm decorating the back instead of the front is because there was glitter on the other side and I didn't want any of those raised wood or the, any of the raised words to stick up from the wallpaper. So I'm just gonna peel the back off and smooth that out. It's a great easy way to do a DIY, no paint or anything involved and you get great coverage. Now I did cut it a little bit larger than I needed and then I'm just taking a sanding block from the Dollar Tree and sanding it to give me a perfect cut along the edges. And they have this in all different kinds of patterns. All my Dollar Trees seem to be carrying it nowadays, which really makes me happy because I love it. Now, I like to sand mine to rough it up a little bit. Kind of uh, makes those lines not so dark and kind of makes it look a little bit more weathered, a little bit more coastal. And then I just want to go in and poke holes back in it um, just so I'll be able to reattach a hanger to it. So just poking a hole through the removable wallpaper. And I like to use one of those weeders from the Dollar Tree. Um, those work great. And then this is the eggs that we're going to decorate. I think this is so cute. It's got like the little flower and polka dots on the side and the squiggly line egg in the middle. I'm not going to hang this part. So I am just using a little spackle to fill in the holes on this. And so then we're going to decorate it. I wanted to do um, some really beautiful, like coastal looking eggs for this sign with that white wood look background. So just using a scrap piece of burlap I had left over from Walmart. You could always use the bags from a Dollar Tree as well. I sketched the bottom and top of the egg with a Sharpie. And then um, I couldn't really do the sides because there's three eggs together, but I could kind of you know, kind of sketch out where I think the sides of the eggs were going to be from where I started. And then I'm just going to cut inside that Sharpie line to cut off any color and cut out a little burlap for the middle egg. I want to cover that one in burlap for sure. And um, there was little wood cutouts on top of the eggs. Um, but what I'm going to do is just uh, flip it over and decorate the other side. That way I don't have to worry about having to pop those off or paint around those or anything like that. So we're just going to decorate the back of these eggs. And I'm going to use Antique Wax by Waverly. You could always use a brown paint and water um, to make your own stain if you wanted. But I love the finish this gives me. And that raw wood from the Dollar Tree stains really well. So just going over it with a thin coat of anti wax by Waverly. And I get that at Walmart. When I get it all on there, I'm just going to go over that with a paper towel to wipe off any of the excess. And look at that beautiful wood grain. I'm going to leave the two um, eggs on the outside, the wood. And then the middle one, we're going to cover with that burlap that we cut out. But I want mine to look a little bit more coastal, a little bit more like driftwood. So I do distress it heavily with some ivory acrylic and um, a baby wipe to see how that kind of gives me like a lighter finish. And makes it look a little bit more rustic. So this is that piece of burlap that we cut for the center egg. And we're just going to attach it to that center egg with a nice coat of Mod Podge. And it's kind of the same color as the stain on the sides, but you can tell that it's burlap, so you're going to get a different texture. Just going to use my little uh, brayer from uh, my Cricut to kind of smooth that down. And then I'm also going to go over the top of the burlap with more Mod Podge just to make sure it's very saturated. I want this to stay down. And just making sure that's all covered. Anytime you get cut burlap, it's going to fray a little bit, but that's okay. It kind of adds to the charm of this project. And again, you can always use that like synthetic burlap from the Dollar Tree bags and that won't fray at all. And so this sign is going to fit perfectly on this rectangular side. And we're going to take advantage of those little raised areas on the back of the sign because it gives us little spacers to add hot glue. And it's going to kind of give me a 3D effect where the little eggs stick out a little bit further from the sign. So we're just going to glue that down, making sure that it's nice and secure. And then I wanted to use some nautical rope, the six foot cotton rope from 
the Dollar Tree to start decorating our little coastal eggs. I didn't want it to be quite so thick though, so I'm just gonna unwind it into thirds and kind of recreate those little curvy lines that were on the other side that I liked, but we're gonna recreate it with this little curly rope. And you can see that the rope, once you unwind it, already has that little curly pattern because it's been, you know, kind of braided into a rope. And so I just kind of go with the natural pattern of it to give me a little squiggly line made out of rope. Looks really cute against that burlap. And before my hot glue dries, I just kind of shape it um, while I can. <laughs> and then I thought we would do another little squiggle line. Just do a squiggle line of hot glue and just follow along with that little curly pattern that's already in the rope. And you definitely do need to shape it once you get it glued on there to kind of give you a symmetric look. Then I thought we could decorate this using one of these silicone molds that I got on Amazon. I have these linked below in my Amazon shop and you can make anything with a little bit of hot glue. So I'm gonna make a seashell here just by filling that silicone mold with some hot glue. And I'm also going to make a little starfish. These are so easy to do. I just pop mine in my refrigerator or freezer and they set up in no time. Just try to make sure that you don't fill them too much because um, then you will have to trim off the overfill. But it's a great way to make little sea creatures like that. So I popped it in the freezer for just a couple of minutes and now we have a little starfish. We have a little seashell and we can decorate our little coastal Easter eggs with those. So I did overfill my starfish a tiny bit, so I'm just using some tiny scissors to trim that up a little bit. But how cute is that? I love making those. They're like um, for like fondant for like frosting molds is what they're kind of designed for. But you can find them in all different kinds of sea creatures and things like that on Amazon for sure. And then I also have a little sand dollar there that I got on Amazon too. Um, you could always use the one from the Dollar Tree as well. So excited. I noticed DollarTree.com. One of you guys told me to check. They are starting to add some of the shore living things to the website. So it's going to be soon, guys. Yay. Now on the little... Um, seashell I think I may have underfilled it instead of overfilling it so it does kind of have a jagged edge but that actually makes it look a little bit more realistic like a real seashell so we're going to go with it so I'm going to use some ivory paint because these are just kind of clear glue at the moment and paint that look at that great texture on the seashell it looks so cool when you paint these hot glue molds and then I'm also going to paint the little starfish ivory as well. And we have some great decorations to decorate our little Easter eggs. The first time I made one of these, it like blew my mind. Um, um, I have a couple of the different seahorse ones. I love using them for those because I never can find any of those to decorate with. So now we can start decorating. Here's our little sand dollar. Just going to hot glue that right in the center of our burlap egg. And then doing our little crazy seashell over here to the left. And then our little starfish over on the right. Isn't it like a fun decoration for an Easter egg? Very coastal, very cute, but you could always get creative and do whatever kind of decoration you want on your Easter egg. So I just hot glue those down in the center of our egg. You could always use real seashells as well. That would be super cute. But I kind of wanted to use the mold for those. And then for the other eggs, I want to decorate those with shells as well. These are those little mini seashells that you get in the little glass bottles from the Dollar Tree. I love decorating with those. My favorite is to put them in those little toy organizers from the Dollar Tree. Um, just because they're easier to work with and get out than they are the bottle. So I just dump them in there and they have all different kinds as well. So I thought we would repl replicate the polka dots that were on the Easter egg on the other side. 
by just using seashells. So just doing a little thin bead of hot glue on the lip of each one of those seashells. We're just gonna glue those down to that stained wood, kind of in a alternate like polka dot pattern, just kind of alternating rows. Super easy and super fun. You know if there's an opportunity to decorate with seashells, your girl is gonna take it. Okay, that one looks pretty good. And now we can start moving on to decorate the other side. I thought we'd switch it up on this side and use a little tiny starfish. I get these on Amazon. They're always available in my shop below. Sometimes you get all tiny ones like this. Sometimes they vary the size, kind of depends. They also have these in blue. I get them in blue as well, but I love them. They're real little tiny starfish and they're dried the perfect ivory color for this project. So I'm just picking out enough of them to kind of give that same polka dot pattern that we got on the other side with seashells just by alternating them. They're kind of delicate, but once you get them glued on, they should be good to go. So just gonna do a dot of hot glue everywhere I want one and just simply attach those. And I think these little coastal Easter eggs turned out so cute for the sign. So whimsical and fun for Easter and totally goes with the coastal vibe in my home. Now I wanted to make the hanger extra special so I'm gonna use some of this wood bead garland from the Dollar Tree. They have these um, in the square or the round um, balls. Um, and I love it because the colors are going to be perfect, that nice neutral color. I'm just going to leave it on the twine that's on there and simply tie that to our little sign. Just cutting it a little bit longer, removing some of the beads so I still have enough twine to work with so that I can tie that to the top. And I think that natural wood goes really well uh, with the natural colors that we used in the coastal DIY. Now, the only thing I thought this thing still needed was maybe a bow, but I wanted to do something coastal as well. So I'm gonna use some of this great mesh ribbon. I love picking this up from the Dollar Tree because I think it looks a little bit like fishing net. They have it like in the white or tan or green colors. The tan is probably my favorite, but I do use the white a lot too. But we're gonna use the tan for this one. See how it kind of resembles like an old net? I love the vibe it gives. So we're just gonna make a really fun bow out of this, just by kind of like you make a traditional bow. Pinch it in the middle, make a loop, make another loop and pinch it. And then we're gonna do that like three times on each side. We're gonna make a big bow. So we're gonna have three loops on each side. You don't have to twist it or anything. Just pinch it in the middle. And then once you get three loops on both sides, um, I'm gonna need a tail on that side as well. So just gonna cut that off. And then to attach it in the middle, I'm just keeping it really good and pinched. And then I'm gonna bring in some twine from the Dollar Tree and just tie that in the center of the bow. It's gonna give us a really fun coastal looking bow that we can decorate this sign with. I love using this stuff. Sometimes you don't even have to tie a bow. You can just tie a knot in the middle. You're still gonna get that really fun effect. Absolutely beautiful. So just kind of cutting my tails down to make them even, pulling those the same direction as well. And then we're gonna attach that to the hanger. I was trying to decide which side I wanted to put it on. And I'm just gonna tie that on to the twine that's already on the hanger. And I think this little Easter DIY is ready to go. Loving the coastal vibes. I'm loving all of the natural little touches on there. So cute. Just trying to rearrange my big fluffy net bow. And this is how it turned out our little coastal Easter eggs. This is definitely one of my favorites. 
Okay, are you ready for another DIY? I found this great wreath form from the Dollar Tree. It's just an orange wire carrot, but I thought we could do something fun and coastal with this. It's just got like the squiggly little lines and kind of the outline. Now I wanna use um, some different kinds of Dollar Tree rope to cover that. I'm gonna start with the 11 foot nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. This is a, the thinner, a longer one. And um, I thought that would make a great outline around the edges of the carrot because it's not too thick. So just starting down here at the tip, we're just gonna simply hot glue the rope onto this. And you know, I have like the little beehive um, wreath form. I'll have to do something with rope with that as well because it's so easy to DIY these with rope because sometimes they're hard, kind of hard to figure out how to decorate, right? So just working one section at a time, I'm just going to hot glue that down. This is the perfect width to cover the orange behind it and you won't be able to see it. I'm working on a silicone mat, so that really helps with the excess hot glue because it's gonna be removable. And just keep going around the shape of the carrot, just outlining that on there. Trying to make sure it doesn't get too stuck. I thought we would use two different kinds of rope today because the little squiggly lines in the middle, I think those are gonna need even a smaller kind of rope. So I think I'm gonna use like the uh, six foot rope, maybe unrolled for that part. I do have some leftover from the other DIY. So we're gonna glue it down, cut it down to size for the tip and we have the carrot part nice and outlined. Um, you can always, uh, you know, flip it over, use your heat gun, kind of trim up some of the excess hot glue if you get too much. Now I'm also going to do the same thing up here at the top. The little greenery coming out of the top of the carrot. We're going to outline that with that same exact rope, just hot gluing that around the edge. And we're not just gonna do rope on this. We are gonna add some other coastal touches, but for right now, we're just using rope to give us a really cute little reef outline. Since these lines are straight and easy to do, I'm gonna do these in that same rope, just a straight shot across, just cutting that down to size and hot gluing that on on both of those. Now the little squiggly lines, again, are gonna have to go back and forth and back and forth. So I'm just gonna use one of the ropes that is unwound to do that part to give me that little squiggly pattern. And it kinda already has that pattern like we did before on those little eggs. So it's gonna work well for this. You just kinda have to Hot glue down like one section at a time. And we're gonna cover up all four of those little squiggle lines with that rope. And I'd like to take a moment to thank you for watching today's video. I really appreciate your support. Don't forget to hit the like button. And when you're done watching, if you could comment your favorite DIY below, I always love your all's feedback and to read all of your nice comments. And if you haven't subscribed, we are trying to get to 15,000 subscribers, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So just finishing up the fourth little squiggle line here, then I thought we could do something fun with driftwood maybe. I did have some driftwood from Amazon, um, and also some I get the driftwood filler from Target. I was trying to decide which one I was gonna use for this, and I think I'm gonna go with the ones from Target. They're a nice and easy to DIY with, they're nice and flat. Um, they usually have these all the time at Target, um, back in like their floral section. And if you watch, they do go on sale. I always try to stock up when they go on sale because they're so fun to craft with. And it always gives you that coastal look. And I just am hot gluing those. I kind of found some shorter ones for the shorter parts and some longer ones for the longer parts. Just gluing that from rope to rope just to kind of give me a fun little driftwood greenery for the top of our carrot. Just another little coastal touch to this little carrot wreath. So I picked these sizes out specifically to fill it up and it does a pretty good job. Now I thought some of those little uh, tiny seashells from the Dollar Tree 
would make perfect decorations to decorate this carrot a little bit more. Trying to figure out which ones I'm gonna use and then I'm just going to start hot gluing those to the little rope there in the center. On this one I thought I would use like just the little seashell ones and just kind of alternate them like one up, one down, going all the way across to give me a little shell detail. Now I have two rows there, so I thought I would go in maybe with a different kind of seashell, some of these little spiral-like shells, and kind of do another row of those, kind of side by side. The colors um, are very similar to the white rope, so it's not a big contrast, but it's definitely a beautiful little detail when you get to looking at this little carrot. Isn't that cute and fun? We've got rope, we've got driftwood, we've got seashells. Definitely an unexpected carrot. Perfect for a coastal Easter decor. And this is how it looks hanging on my wall for Easter. And you could always hang this on a door as well. It's not a really big wreath. I'm kind of hanging mine at an angle because I think it looks better that way. So fun. Oh guys, I want to take a quick moment to tell you how you can connect with me. I do have a private Facebook group. I have it linked below. I also have a Facebook page. You're going to want to follow both. And then I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. And I would love it if you would come give me a follow. Your support means the world to me. Okay, the next DIY is going to be really easy. I found this great blue Happy Easter egg from the Dollar Tree. And look how coastal it already looks. It's like light blue. It looks like wood. It's got the galvanized metal bunny on there. I want to make it like a standing um, sign. And so I have that little wood cactus that we're going to use for a stand. But you could use whatever you have. Now to give it a coastal charm, we're gonna use some of these glass stickers from the Dollar Tree. They have little um, starfish and seashells. So cute, even like little coral on there. And even though they're glass stickers, they're pretty much gonna stick to whatever you've got. And I'm just gonna kind of create a border, kind of similar to what we did on the bunny rabbit earlier. Just to go around the edges of our Easter egg, just to give a little bit of coastal decor there. Then instead of filling up the hole at the top there, since it's all painted nicely, um, I'm just gonna use some twine from the Dollar Tree, tie a simple bow, and just glue that on the hole to cover that up. I always like to disguise those holes if I can. But the color is perfect for coastal, I think, and it says Happy Easter. I love the little galvanized bunny. The flowers aren't too much. Um, and this I thought would make a perfect little stand. Um, I've been using the metal stands a lot. That would work really well. But the cactus works good because it's got like all these little cactus arms that you could hot glue to the back of your project. And we're just going to simply glue that to the back. I'm not going to bother painting it or anything. I'm just going to kind of leave it natural wood. I think it's going to go with the coastal Easter decor and I told you this one was going to be easy. This is how it turned out. And I love the little tiny coastal touches. So easy and fun. Okay, our next DIY. I picked this little basket up from the Target dollar spot for $5. It's basically just a rope basket. You could uh, make this pretty easily with Dollar Tree rope if you wanted to wrap it with like some white ribbon and glue that together, but for $5, I thought we would give it a go. I thought we could make this a really pretty coastal Easter centerpiece. So the first thing we're gonna use is some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree, just kind of breaking that all up. And I wanna make like a kind of a giant bunny nest here for Easter. And I thought the brown color would definitely go well with kind of my coastal decor. And then I also picked up this little white bunny for $5 at the Target dollar spot. And it is simply just a white ceramic bunny. You could always use one that you already have, but I definitely wanted the white color. I'm gonna go with like a lot of whites and browns on this project and warm colors. 
So I kind of just set him towards the back there so we can decorate the rest. And then I picked up these little gold Easter eggs at the Dollar Tree. I love these because the color is going to be nice and neutral and I won't have to paint them or anything. And we can just open the package and dump them in. But the color is great. Definitely going to go with my coastal vibe. But I want it to be kind of like tropical, not traditional Easter. So I did pick up some palm fronds, also from the Target Dollar spot. Um, you can sometimes find these, something similar at Dollar Tree. But I really like these ones from the Target Dollar spot. I think they look nice and tropical. But you can kind of use whatever you've got. They do have tropical leaves from the Dollar Tree for sure. But look how cute these are. So I thought we would cut them down a little bit. They were a little bit too long. And that was probably the most difficult part. <laughs> and just start stabbing those in to the Spanish moss. And can you kind of see the vibe we're going with with this? I think it's going to be really pretty for an Easter centerpiece. This will look great on your table for Easter. And I think one more is going to be really good. Just kind of poking that down in there. Couldn't get any easier than that. Just kind of scattering the little gold Easter eggs around as well. Now this is that mesh ribbon from the Dollar Tree that I think looks like fishing net. So I thought it'd be fun just to kind of cut a piece. Kind of lay it in there to kind of give like a fishing net feel. And kind of maybe do one this direction as well just to provide a little bit more texture, a little bit more coastal fun. And kind of arranging the little gold Easter eggs on it, around it, under it. I like the little eggs peeking out from behind the palm fronds. I think that looks cute. And then a little sand dollar from the Dollar Tree. And some of my coastal stash, I have like some starfish that I get on Amazon. You can always use the ones from Dollar Tree as well. Super excited. So that for, hopefully they'll bring both of those back again this year for the Shore Living line. And just kind of scatter the little sand dollars, seahorses in there, and the eggs. And kind of arrange them until I'm happy with it. Then I thought maybe a few seashells as well. These are just some seashells from the Dollar Tree. Just kind of have to scatter them around to get it exactly how you like it. And this is how it turned out. I think it's so cute, a little coastal Easter centerpiece. So easy to put together. If you can't find this exact basket, you could pretty much do that with any kind of a shallow bowl. Just enough to hold all your goodies in there. Okay, up next, we're gonna use some more of these glass stickers from the Dollar Tree. I love these. And um, some little galvanized metal Easter decorations. I picked up a bunny and a little Easter chick. And then one of these long skinny um, Easter egg signs from the Dollar Tree. This is the perfect color for my coastal decor. That like robin egg blue. Thought we could do a really fun, simple like Easter sign. And I wanted to use the galvanized metal. I didn't really want to paint them though. So I thought maybe the glass stickers might be a fun option to decorate these little guys. They're gonna fit perfectly on that long sign though. They're just the right width. So I'm just gonna open up some of these glass stickers. They're like a um, blue and like metal color of detail on them as well. And they're a little bit frosted. And we're just gonna decorate our little bunny and chick with little starfish and seashells, whatever other goodies are on here. And couldn't be any easier. Just kind of doing like a, kind of like a floral design, but with seashells. And I'm always looking for fun ways to try to decorate those galvanized metal pieces because I do like them, but sometimes I think they look a little bit plain if you leave them as is. So we're gonna do the same thing over here with our little baby chick. And then I wanna attach those to the front of that long Easter sign, but I also want it to spell out the word Easter. So I think that's gonna be a cute background for that. 
There's our little bunny and our little chick. The great thing about the glass stickers is because if you're not happy with they are where, where they're at, you can just pick them up and stick them back down. They're extra sticky. And as you can see, they fit on there really nicely, that long little Easter sign. I'm just going to attach mine with hot glue and simply stick those down. You could leave it as is, it's super cute, kind of abstract looking for Easter. I do want mine to say Easter though, so I am gonna add to it once I get both of these attached. And be careful when you are um, gluing down that metal, it does get hot. We're just gonna use simply some of the wooden letters from the Dollar Tree. And I thought we could just spell out the word Easter all the way down the sign. Just have to find the right letters. And I'm just gonna use the natural wood. It's gonna make it super easy. And just hot glue those down, kind of doing the middle letter first. We're gonna do E-A-S on the bunny and T-E-R on the chick. Just spelling out the word Easter all the way down. And you could always paint or stain these. I think the raw wood though, totally goes with my coastal vibe. And this was kind of an outside the box project, but I think it did turn out really cute for Easter and it's definitely unique. Now I wanna replace the hanger on this one with some of that would-be garland from the Dollar Tree as well. So I just measured out a piece that is the right length and I'm simply going to tie that on. I just think the would-be garland uh, makes your projects look a little extra special. And I think the raw wood definitely goes well for a coastal vibe. This one, I don't think I cut the twine quite long enough. So just to reinforce it on the back, I'm just going to tie another knot of twine on there just to kind of salvage it and make it sturdier. And there is our little Easter sign. So cute, I love that little long blue sign. And this is great for like a skinny wall or an area you don't have a lot of room to decorate. A little skinny coastal Easter sign. Okay, I told you I was going to show you how we could make a smaller version of the little seagrass Easter basket. So they also have this little tiny um, tinsel Easter basket. Kind of the same thing as the wall hanging, but you're gonna get like the 3D piece. It's got the front and the back. And so I'm just gonna remove all of the tinsel that's on there. And we're gonna make just a little um, seagrass Easter basket. This would be really good for like an Easter tear tray. And again, we're just gonna use one of those little basket purses from the Dollar Tree. So the handle on this, the cage kind of comes apart like you can see. And then I thought the best way to cover the handle would be just to take the handle from the bag and simply wrap it around the little plastic form for the handle. It's gonna give me really good coverage. So I just started at one end and wrapped that all the way around. It does kind of come apart a little bit there, you can see. And I'm just going to hot glue that down but I can still um, leave the little hoop loop, loop on there to reattach that to the basket. So we have both sides glued down and that's how it fits together with the cage and it's got little spikes there to kind of stab the eggs in between. So we're just gonna start cutting up this purse to get some seagrass for the basket. And I tell you, uh, this um, definitely looks a lot better than the tinsel, I think. So just kind of measuring that out to size to make sure it's going to fit. Attaching it with some hot glue right around the top of the Easter basket and gluing that down. It's really almost the exact same shape as before, so I'm going to kind of do the same technique. I'm going to cut it down to size where there is enough to go around the sides as well, but not too much. And then just hot gluing that around the corners here. And gluing that down. Then just trimming off the excess there on the bottom and then we're just gonna glue the other side as well. 
Definitely be careful on this step that you're not burning yourself. I just want enough to cover the cage and nothing more. It's looking super cute. Now we need to do the same thing with uh, the back of the decoration as well. The little basket by using the other side of the purse. I'm just going to cut out another piece. And just kind of repeating the same process using my finished edge for the top. Makes it, gives me a nice straight edge. Making sure I have enough to go around the sides but not too much. And then I can just glue that to the sides like before. Now the little plastic pegs on the little cage are still there so that I can put this little Easter basket back together. But there are also little stakes in there to kind of hold the eggs in place. And so I kind of need to deal with the eggs at this point too. I actually had some eggs. These are just some foam eggs I had left over from old Easter decoration that kind of fell apart and they're the perfect color. So I'm going to use them to replace the little eggs that were already in there um, just because those had glitter. And since I have these, the colors are perfect. You could always paint the foam ones as well or paint over the glitter if you don't like the glitter. And then just using hot glue, I'm going to reattach my cage. So using the pegs to put it back together, but the hot glue is also going to glue it in there. And those little spikes hold the little eggs in place as well. Whenever you have like a decoration fall apart like that, be sure to save the pieces because you can find some good stuff. And then I'm just going to, for the greenery, I'm just going to use reindeer moss. Um, there's not a lot of room, but I'm just going to kind of sprinkle that down in there kind of sticking out instead of using like a tensely Easter grass, this is going to look a little bit more natural. And then of course I want another coastal touch. So I'm going to finish it off with a starfish. This is a starfish that I just got on Amazon, but you could always use the ones from the Dollar Tree. And how cute is that little Easter basket? I love it. This is how it looks just hanging, um, sitting on my shelf for Easter in front of some grass. So cute. I love both of those little Easter basket DIYs. Okay, I thought we could make another one of the long Easter signs. And so I have some more ideas for you how to make a coastal sign. I got a hop sign from the Dollar Tree, a little blue Easter egg sign from the Dollar Tree, and then a long wood Easter bunny cutout sign. And the reason I got this hop sign is because I thought it would be a great way to get some letters for a sign. Um, way cheaper than buying the big letters from anywhere else. You can just cut this down because these signs are pretty easy to cut. So I'm just using a box cutter to cut out my H. And um, I want to do, you know, my own thing for the O. So I think I'm going to make that like an Easter egg, like a coastal Easter egg. So I can save that bunny for something else, but basically I bought this just for that H or that P. And they do have glitter on there. It's not too bad though. Once I get it cut down to size, I'm just going to sand it a little bit just to give myself a smooth edge. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here by cutting the P off. And that is just one way you can reuse some of these Dollar Tree signs. Um, sometimes I get the ones with lots of words on them, cut them down into multiple signs, and you have like tons of signs for your tear tray, and it only costs you like $1.25 for all of them. The colors aren't too bad on that. I probably am going to do my own thing on that. But for the O for Hop, I thought we could just use an Easter egg, and I got one of these little blue ones from the Dollar Tree. They come in like a two-pack. It's just about the right size for an O. Now I'm going to use that removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree to cover my letters to kind of give them a coastal feel. That way I don't have to deal with any of the glitter or colors that are already on there. And I just draw that design out on the back of the wallpaper and then you can just cut that out to size and you'll just have a big sticker decal that's gonna look nice and coastal. I love the white board. Uh, my favorite is the blue tropical leaf of removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree, but this is probably my second favorite. And super easy to cut out. 
So now it's just a giant sticker. We can just peel and stick that on. Easy peasy. It's kind of the same feel that was on there before, but no color and no glitter. But I think that's going to look good against that little wood bunny sign that we're going to put these on. I'm going to do the same thing with my P, just using an ink pen to draw it out. And you know, you could also do that just to make letter stickers like that and kind of save your letters if you wanted. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and cover my letters though, but that would be a cute hack as well. If you have a middle part like that, if you just kind of bend it, it gets it easy to cut out that little center part. And we have our little coastal H and our little coaster P for our little hop sign. If you don't get it on there perfect, you can always smooth it off a little bit with a sanding block to take off any excess. Then we're also going to cover the egg. That way all of my letters will look consistent. They're all going to have that like white board feel. Kind of tie it all together. So we're just going to cover the Easter egg with that paper as well. So now we have all of our letters. I do like to sand over the top of this just to kind of blend that in, make it look a little bit more rustic and weathered, kind of rough up the glossiness of the paper as well. Now here is our little wood bunny sign, super cute. I love the natural color. I think that looks really coastal and it's got that cute little bunny cut out at the top. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the hanger. And just like before, we're gonna use some of that wood bead garland from the Dollar Tree just to replace the hanger. And just by knotting that off on the back, making sure that it's gonna stay put. If it doesn't, I just add another knot. So here's our little coastal letters that we made, our hop letter, super cute. They fit on there really nicely. And we're just gonna attach those with hot glue. And just a cheaper hack to get some of the bigger letters to use for your DIY for sure. And I am going to decorate uh, the egg a little bit more, but for now we're just going to glue these down. They're just about the right size. And I kind of want to do like the egg at an angle. I'm going to go ahead and put the P on first to make sure that I know exactly how much room I have. I just kind of glue that a little askew. Kind of emphasizes the fact that that's an Easter egg. And then to decorate it, we're just going to use a sand dollar. Um, you could use the one from the Dollar Tree. This is actually one that I got on Amazon. Whatever you have. And I'm just going to glue that on my Easter egg. Just kind of leaving it the natural color. Just a fun little coastal touch to this DIY. And this one was pretty easy to put together. Just a few steps involved. And this is how it looks hanging in my home for Easter. Super coastal and super cute. Okay, are you guys ready for another coastal Easter DIY? We're going to use one of these little flags from the Dollar Tree. I guess they're called flags. I don't know what else to call them. Wall hangings and a little bamboo wreath from the Dollar Tree. And I thought we could make a little mini Easter wreath. It's just about the right size. And I thought we could just cut this little like um, pennant sign down to size, just using the wreath form, um, kind of as a template to know where I can cut it down. And it's gonna be a cute little background behind my wreath that is also uh, gonna act like a sign. I like the colors on it. I think it's really pretty, the pastels for Easter. Um, the happy Easter part, that was a little bright and shiny, as you can see there. But I'm going to tone that down a little bit. I'm just going to use some matte Mod Podge to try to take away some of the gleam because it was just so super shiny. I'm just kind of sealing that down. Now here is our wreath form and we're going to start decorating the sky. I'm going to start with just a hanger while I can. I'm just going to take some twine and tie a simple knot to the top. And then we can start decorating this. I kind of wanted to do like 
a tropical uh, foli foliage from the Dollar Tree. Um, it can be kind of whatever you want, but I definitely wanted to do something a little bit more coastal, a little bit more tropical. And so I thought these leaves would be really good. We're just gonna start cutting those off and sticking that down into the little um, jute that's already wrapped around it. It makes it super easy to decorate by just sliding your greenery down right inside. So we're just gonna keep working our way around, filling that up with the greenery. And then I'm gonna switch it up to like a different kind of leaf just for a little bit of variety. But this has got that nice like variegated pattern on the leaves as well. And just kinda start alternating that in there as well. I just want a nice leafy wreath. Now these leaves were, um, didn't quite keep the shape quite as well as the first set that we used. So I am gonna have to shape those up a little bit, just using uh, some twine. Just some additional twine that I can kind of wrap around those to kind of make those go exactly where I want them to be. And you'll never know that there's more twine on there because it kind of goes with what was already on the little bamboo wreath. Just tying that off at the end and that definitely helped to shape it up a little bit. Now I wanted to add some flowers and I thought these looked really nice and coastal. Um, and they're like a beachy blue color. I thought that would be really pretty for Easter and they're also like a pastel color. So I'm just gonna cut off the stems short enough where I can kind of stab those down into it. Just kind of alternating with the tropical leaves. So pretty, I love it. Now I did hot glue those down a little bit just to make sure they um, stayed in place. And they were like little bit different size flowers, but that's okay as well. Now here is that happy Easter sign. I still thought it was a little too bright for my coastal vibe. So I am gonna distress it with a little ivory paint as well, just to kind of mute that down a little bit. Just personal preference. But this makes a great background for the wreath because it's just the right size. And then it's gonna also say Happy Easter. Now it's ready to go and we can attach it to the back of this wreath. My lighting is really bright on my work desk, so it's kind of hard to see at this point. I apologize for that and just kind of flip it over, figure out where my top is, and then we can just simply attach that to the back. I did cut it out maybe a little bit too big, so I'm cutting off a little bit of the excess fabric so that you can't see it from the sides. And then I'm just gonna simply attach that to the back of our wreath form with a little bit of hot glue. Just kind of going around the edges. And gluing that down to it. This was just a simple little mini wreath. This would look great hanging on your wall for Easter or a door or maybe even a cabinet. Then I wanted, of course, a little bit of coastal decor. So I'm gonna use some Dollar Tree seashells and just kind of work those around of the wreath using different colors, shapes, and sizes, just kind of having them peek out behind the tropical leaves, just for another little coastal touch. And I thought that was the perfect final step in this DIY. You can't go wrong with seashells ever in my decorating. So just one seashell between each flower. And this is how it looks. This is how it looks with better lighting. You can kind of see that muted Happy Easter behind it. And this is how it looks on my door to my garage. Super cute for Easter. I would love to thank you guys for tuning in today. I really appreciate it. And I wanted to let you know that I have introduced memberships on my channel for $4.99 a month. You can get early access to my videos plus other perks. And it's just a great way to support your favorite YouTuber. Okay, are you ready for the final reveal? Let's go. You've got me questioning my
like to give a big shout out to the following crafty beach bums for sending me super thanks super chats buying me a copy sending me a cash app i really appreciate your support and you're helping us grow um hopefully we will make it to 15,000 subscribers soon that is the best way you can support me is to like comment and subscribe that always helps the algorithm and helps my channel reach more people if you'd like more crafty beach YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here. Thanks for watching.